Hi there, this is Christopher. I'm here to talk about how to get um, more out of our synchronous live sessions uh, and more specifically, how do we check for understanding when we have our video uh, sessions with our students. So I've included right here a bit.ly for you to access this presentation. So you could type that in. Um, I did a live recording today of my session with uh, teachers, um, but this is a little bit more uh, streamlined video without the, the interruptions of questions and answers. Um, and so, um, you know, when you think about this, uh, when you think about us teaching in a normal environment, we learning is a blend of both the digital and physical. And um, right now in COVID-19, shelter in place, teaching remotely, we're really learning what can and should be done online uh, in that digital space, but we're really feeling what's missing from the physical presence of being in a classroom with our students. Um, in no way can we ever replicate what we do in the classroom in a digital space. And we're all feeling that in very uh, deep and real ways. And so um, what we're doing our best to do is, is really just try to continue to make learning progress and how to be able to support students to the best of our ability. Now, one of the most valuable things that we use class time for is for checking for understanding and giving students timely formative feedback that helps them move towards our learning objectives. But um, we're now having to do that in these live synchronous sessions and a, a real common uh, sentiment that teachers express is that, you know, I'm talking to this grid of letters or profile pictures. You know, I'm like, hello, is anybody there? I'm used to in class asking a question and, and students respond or give me nonverbal cues, but it's like talking to an echo chamber sometimes when you're doing a synchronous session. So this is all about how do we kind of engage them a little bit more and more specifically, how do we um, engage them so that we can find out where they're at in their learning progress process and then give them that timely feedback um, that helps them learn and grow and get better and improve. So um, before you get going, I really encourage you to kind of set the foundation for all of this. Um, Steph, Roth Steph Rothstein did a really great uh, session on how to increase just general student to student and student to teacher interactions. She talked in the very beginning about setting expectations. So this right here links to her presentation. This is really important for you to make sure students um, have a clear understanding of how the session will be conducted, what your expectations are, you know, reminding them of student use tech, uh, policy for how they should be conducting themselves online. And it's important for you to start wrapping your head around, you know, what does your, session uh, look like? What do you want it to look like? How does that fit in with like your week and your, your workflow? Um, how do you want students to inter interact? I'm gonna share a variety of different methods in which you could check for understanding. And it's all about you finding the one that kind of meshes best with your learning style and your content area and, and where you are in your sequence. But I've kind of broken this down into kind of four categories. The first category is just like, Generally, how do we get students to ask their questions? So what tools are available for us to do that? Then there's how do we also ask questions so that we can really start getting some, uh, some information from our students that we can then teach based off of. Next category is gamification. How do we use games to boost engagement, kind of make it fun, but also collect some of that information and be able to give some timely formative feedback. And then last, there's kind of like an other category that kind of fits with all, in all of them and um, is also about checking for understanding. So the first one is a built-in feature for Google Slides and it's the Q&A feature. So when you go to present in Google Slides, if you click on that little triangle right there, um, you have the option to say present uh, presenter view. It'll pull up this little box. Students won't see this if you're sharing your presentation window. Um, and then uh, you'll click on audience tools and hit start new. And then this will bring up a uh, another web page for uh, Q&A and it'll include the code. It'll also be embedded at the top of your presentation that students can then click on or open and they will then be able to enter their questions in this box and then students will see other questions. They can upvote them. So if it's a common question, you'll see it in your presenter view and then 
If it's a question that you really want to highlight and discuss, you could actually click present. It'll then like pop up onto your presentation slide and then you can address that question. Um, so here in this way, uh, you could be um, asking students to ask a question and then you could be addressing it there. Another way in which you could be um, giving students an opportunity to ask questions is through a form. I've shared this in other ways. Um, one idea for this is to uh, steal this form right here that I've made a copy of. You can make a copy for your own. You would throw that link into the chat of your Zoom or Google Meet. Students would then um, click on that and they would complete the form. It basically is their name, the date, the period, um, and then they can give their status of where they're at. Yellow light, um, green light, yellow light, red light. Um, they can type in their questions at the bottom and then you'll see it in responses but you'll also be able to see it in a spreadsheet. And so you can kind of get a holistic view of, is my class mostly in the yellow light category or a red light? Um, and you'll also be able to get the specific students who are those yellow and red, and then you can um, then be able to target your feedback for those particular students. So feel free to take this form, make it your own, uh, and then share that at the beginning of the class. A little bonus, you could be using this for attendance uh, if you wanted, because you'll have all those in a spreadsheet. So that's just another way of doing it. Um, another way that students can ask questions, and this starts getting into a little bit more of student interaction. This is from Steph, Steph's uh, previous session uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, she has a built out document. Basically, you'll have all of your students' names on there. Students can then write their questions uh, or respond to a prompt in the set space. And then students can even comment on each other and so this is a great way for students to interact with one another, but then also for you to be seeing what is coming up and be able to address it both in your presentation or using uh, the comment feature of the Google Doc. So that's a really great way um, to, to check a lot of boxes. Another really great tool is called Pear Deck. This is an add-on. Um, it's an external company that integrates really well with uh, Google Slides. It can be a teacher-paced presentation or even a student paced presentation. So kind of synchronous versus asynchronous applications. Basically, uh, you insert questions that um, are kind of punctuated throughout your presentation. When you get to that slide, it will then prompt the students who are viewing your presentation through Pear Deck's website. And then uh, they will be prompted with that question. They type in their responses. You'll see them as they're typing. On the teacher side, you'll see uh, the student name and what they're, how they're responding, but then you can also um, present that and be able to show the questions or comments that kids are making, um, and then it anonymizes them so you won't, students won't see those names. So this presentation has like a nice little video tutorial of how to do that up. It's really very user-friendly and, and can be really powerful. I really like it. Slido is another add-on that, um, you would add to your um, slide, um, your Google Slides initially, and then um, similar to Pear Deck, you would need to open it and then you insert questions. Um, it has a little bit more functionality in that it has uh, a Q&A feature kind of like um, the Google Slides built in Q&A, and then it has the multiple choice questions. You can have polls. One of the things I like is that you can have word clouds, so you can have students respond with uh, uh, um, individual words to a, a thing, like, so what comes up when I say this, or, or something like that. And then students will see this slide. They'll be able to join through that join code. Um, and then as they type that in, then you'll start seeing those words as they pop up the more frequently said words will show up as larger. And so again, this can make our uh, presentations a little bit more interactive and more cooperative and hopefully even a little bit more fun. So Slido is really cool. Jamboard is uh, part of the Google suite. You'll see it if you click on the little waffle in your, in your uh, Google Drive. It's basically like a digital whiteboard. Um, you could have questions preloaded on your different uh, slides. Your, it's kind of like Google Slides uh, in that it has like a, 
you know, an individual slide that you can toggle between. Um, you could have, again, a question in the center, and then students with edit rights can comment in the, in the perimeter with uh, their own sticky notes. They can insert pictures. They can even draw. Um, it's a really cool tool that um, um, makes it very interactive for students, and you can then have it saved and exported later on to show uh, products of what was done. Padlet is actually a lot like Jamboard, but it's been around a lot longer. Um, in the same way, you can create um, some sort of editable uh, slide. You can set the background. This is one I did years ago with anatomy physiology where I asked students. Um, so I created one for the period. And then I said in the, in the title, you know, the benefits of exercise on different systems. And I wrote a question, I said, share. Um, uh, pick a system and then share the physiological effect of exercise on that system. So then students have the ability to write on it. They can add pictures. They can add uh, external links. So it's a, it has a little bit more functionality than Jamboard in ter terms of what students can share. Um, so And there's a link here for other ways in which you can use Padlet. Okay, so the next category are games. So games can be a lot of fun. We do these in class and we can actually use these in this synchronous session. So it's a fun way to check for understanding that allows you then to pause and give formative feedback. So many people have heard of Kahoot. Kahoot is a, um, a, a platform where you uh, create a game or choose from existing games. Students join via the app or the website and they access your game via a code. Um, and then you can control the workflow of the game and then you can actually also pause and give feedback based on the responses to the students. Um, this goes back, I wanna pause and go back to what I talked about at the outset, which is it's really important to have uh, norms and behaviors about how they should be interacting in synchronous sessions in general, because for example, when they join Kahoot, they're asked to put in a name, so things like reminding them that when they do that, they need to put their real name, not some nickname or inappropriate name. So this and all the other future games I'm gonna talk about, the same kind of guidelines. Another game that's fairly new on the scene is called GimKit. It's uh, kind of cool, it's similar to Kahoot in that uh, you can add questions, you can um, uh, choose from existing questions. Uh, it's you know self-paced or teacher-paced and um, it gives great formative feedback and students access through a join code through a website. Um, what's kind of cool is this one was made by a student and uh, he's really gamified it in a lot of ways. Um, so when students are doing it, they they get they earn money for answering correct answers, and so it's kind of another layer of of fun. They don't earn real money, but it's 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 like point system. Um, quizzes is another one. It's also like the others. All three of these, I think, have like a leaderboard so they can see as students are uh, entering their responses who's, who's getting the high scores. Um, they can join, again, through that website. You can control the pace. Uh, quizzes, again, has uh, questions that you can choose from. There's already um, uh, quizzes that are potentially within your content area, but then, of course, you can make your own. So. All of these games are fun to, to play during your live session. Students participate, so now they're really engaging, and then you can use the information from those answers to give them some feedback on, on what they're doing well and what they need to improve upon. Okay, now we're getting into a little bit more of the targeted feedback, a little bit more, this is in the other category. So we have within Canvas the ability to give quizzes and then see the results of those quizzes through quiz statistics. So um, in my biology classes, in non-remote learning format, I would always have a vodcast, a video lecture that students would watch for homework. And then there would immediately be a, uh, a quiz I called a CFU, check for understanding quiz that students would complete after that vodcast. And the purpose of that quiz was for students to see where their gaps were. What did they understand and what did they not understand? Um, this was also for me to see where their gaps were. Now this quiz was a graded quiz, but it did not count towards their grade. So whatever they got on the quiz, which was usually a really low score because it's their first attempt, 
uh, did not affect their grade. And the whole point of it was, again, just to figure out what they got and what they didn't get. So I would start class often by pulling up this set of results. So I could point out and say, okay, you guys did really good with this question, same with this, but this one, uh oh, what happened here? And so then we would spend the beginning of class talking about that. So you could do this in the same format, maybe at the beginning of the week, you give your video lecture and you have some simple five question quiz that students complete and maybe the second time you see them in the week, you pull up their quiz results and you go over it in class and so in your synchronous session. So in this way, you're giving very like targeted feedback on specific elements of your content. Now you can also see student analysis, so you could even be following up with those kids if needed. Um, but uh, I think generally at a class level, this is, this is really powerful. The final tool that is here, and this is kind of the most, a little more, the more advanced, um, but also a lot of uh, return on investment for this is called Thin Slides. And the basic premise of Thin Slides is that you create a slide presentation, Google Slides or Slide Deck, and you could steal this template right here. And the general flow is that uh, you would have some set of instructions. Every kid would have their own slide in the slide presentation, and they would then work on that slide to respond to your prompt, giving them about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes max. And then you will be able to see them editing each and every one of those slides. And then they will have an expectation of you're gonna be presenting that and then they will unmute themselves and they will need to share in 30 seconds what their prompt, what their response was. Um, so this could be great for um, going over like a big idea or a particular vocabulary word. Um, you could have students, uh, you know, it, it, it's good for like very divergent type questions. And what you get is you'll have students, it's very good for differentiating. So you'll have like really advanced students do very advanced um, pictures and ideas. And then others, it'll be a lot, you know, simpler and more at their level. And so um, the power of this is that when you go to that present mode, you're seeing multiple forms of representation around that one topic. And so it can be really powerful in that way. Um, I did a blog post on this uh, a year and a half ago. I came in and helped in a class and we did a model of thin slides where students actually created a video. So you could actually have students, you know, showing a video of them doing a math problem and then upload that video to their slide. And so now you could have in that share out playing the video and kids having to explain their process of how they solved that problem. Um, so there's all sorts of really cool ways that you could use thin slides. Um, and there's some protocols of how to you know, set that up. Um, but you know, once students kind of get used to this idea of thin slides, you can actually do a lot of really cool rich things with it. So the bottom line with all of this, you know, we're facilitators of the learning. Um, and like I said at the beginning, you know, we're really missing that class time and we're not gonna be able to replace what we did in the class to kind of help fill those gaps, but we're trying to do the best that we can. So how can we use these, maybe some of these tools that might fit with our style to help give students that timely feedback and, and encourage more voices in those synchronous sessions, even if that voice is just a type, typing thing. So um, these are just some of many ways you could make your synchronous sessions more interactive and collect information. I've created a Flipgrid discussion. I would love for you to share what you've been doing or what you've been experimenting with with your synchronous sessions um, so that others can get some ideas and learn from one another. So please uh, scan this code with your Flipgrid app or if you have the presentation open, you can um, click on that link and it'll take you to the discussion. Thanks for watching. Feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help um, make this happen for you, help you set it up or brainstorm other ways that we could mesh this with your learning context. Thanks for your time.